You got a march on. March on. What's up, everybody? Uh, full gear was last night. I am nursing a really, really bad headache. And uh, welcome to what just happened, ladies and germs. Full gear 2021. Um, so let's just let's just dive right into it. We had our buy-in, our pre-show match, and we had the team of Thunder Rosa and Hikaru Shida taking on their TBS, um, respectively, their TBS tournament opponents. Jamie Hayter, Nyla Rose, and uh, this was a very, very good match. Um, we know what Sheeta, we know what Rosa, we know what Nyla brings to the table. But even Jamie Hader, she's been very good since she's come back, kind of um, languishing as uh, Bitch Baker's bodyguard. I think she can do so much more. But effectively, this was kind of a preview of the TBS tournament to see um, what to expect. Um, these ladies put in some very, very quality work. We had two former women's champions in this match, Sheeta and Nyla Rose. And um, it's just, this is what a pre-show match should be. Should be able to get the people going. I don't think there were any other matches on the main card that, that could have possibly been on the, um, on the buy-in. So they went with this. And it's always good when we can get more than one women's match on the card. Uh, in the end, Rosa and Sheeta won. I actually picked Nyla Rose and Hater to win, just because I feel like Sheeta and Rosa are going to win their TBS tournament matches. So, but uh, Hater, I mean Sheeta and Rosa win this match, and we move on to the main card. We open up with MJF versus Darby Allen. Now, in the in the pre-show, in the pre-show on. Uh, the Hollywood Wrestling Podcast, episode 45, the full gear preview. I picked MJF to win this match. And I only did it for one reason and one reason only. It feels like Darby is one of the few guys in the company that can effectively take a loss and not be affected by it. Now we're in this realm where wins and losses matter, but sometimes you know like there are people in wrestling that can take a loss and still be fine. Darby Allen's one of those guys. Now, MJF had this thought in his brain that he could win with a headlock takeover, alluding to the fact that he thinks Darby Allen is not a very good wrestler. But I told you before, Darby is reckless. Darby is very, very reckless. Darby is more reckless than Jeff Hardy. But um, honestly, the star of this match was MJF. He, MJF busted out so many unique moves. Um, there was one one point where Darby went for like a Hurricane Rana. MJF caught him and they gave him a power bond on his knee. Ouch. That looked like it hurts. The first five minutes were a little slow, but then it was go, 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 go. Um, MJF, honestly, if you watch this match, MJF really always had this in the bag. Always, always, always. He had the most moves. Um, Darby tried to go for a, for a cold red, and MJF countered that into another into a power bomb, and he dropped him like he dropped Darby right on the back of his neck. And you know, Darby's spunky. He fought back multiple, multiple times, and there's a point where you know, you know they do the roll thing where they're trying to roll each other up, and they keep rolling around ring and rolling around the ring and it came to the ending you're going to see a theme here on this card of really good matches that have shit finishes because mjf went for the skateboard he gave it to darby to hit him with and darby was like no he's not going to do it and while the ref was taking it out of the, um, the skateboard out of the ring darby hit darby was was hit with the dynamite diamond ring uh, effectively being knocked out and the MJF hit a side headlock takeover and pinned him one two 
three. You're also going to find a theme of match is going way too long. This match went 21 minutes, 22 minutes. It did not need to go 22 minutes. If you could could have chopped this thing up into 15 minutes, um, it would have worked a little bit more. But MGF does get the win, and we move on to the World Tag Team Championship match as it is the Lucha Brothers defending against FT. Are. So first things first, FTR came out with this weird ass music. I have no idea what it was, what it is. I don't know. But this was a very, very good match. Um, I don't know how Phoenix is able to do half the shit he's able to do. And we say this each, each 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 and every week that <laughs> Ray Phoenix is a beast Cash and Dax are really really good tag team wrestlers and they were able to keep it slow but also be able to hit some really good powerful moves able to ground Ray and Pensa um, there was a part where I want to say it was Hardwood Dax went uh, went to go for the three because you're gonna see a, another theme of the show was there were a lot of Eddie Guerrero um, tributes as yesterday was the 16th anniversary of his death in Minnesota so and they were in Minnesota so you're gonna see a lot of tributes to Eddie Guerrero um, Dax tried to hit the three amigos and then Penta countered and he hit the three amigos um, Eddie Chance breaking out any in. The Lucha Brothers, Lucha Brothers won the match, but FTR tried going for this thing to confuse the ref by putting their mask on. So, you know, they can, if they do get pinned, the wrong man gets pinned, but you can tell by the bodies. Like, one's clearly lighter than the other. One's bald, the other one has hair. The plan backfired, but this was, um,. This was a, another good match with a shit finish. Um, but the announcers did point out Cash Wheeler wasn't the legal man and he was the one that got pinned. So this is a good story to tell. And um, FTR has another. They have a, a opportunity to say that, you know, the wrong man was pinned. So. Um, Miro versus Brian Danielson. This was the finals of the, uh, the, the World Title Eliminator Tournament, and this went another. This match also went 20 minutes. The Tag Team Championship match went almost 20 minutes. We're getting themes here. I think the shortest match on the card was probably the women's titles match, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, this was all about. This was all about. Sorry, this was all about um, Miro redeeming himself, and Brian Danson also excla exclaiming that he's never beaten Miro, and Miro's just gotten better since then. This was <laughs> this was a technically sound match on Brian's part, where Miro was like, "Yo, just hit me, just beat me," and there was nothing Brian Danson could do to put Miro away until 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 in the end he hit a tornado DDT and they've been telling the story that Miro's weakness is his neck and it is that tornado DDT Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson put in a guillotine and Miro was out now I wanted Miro to win but that's okay. Brian Danson, you know, is never a bad choice. This was a really good match. Honestly, Miro dominated this thing. He dominated with strikes. He used good holds, locked in his finisher, and there was the Brian Danson had to keep using his real true skill and talent to get out of things. Brian Danson never controlled this match. It was never really in control. And honestly, I think he got lucky. Um, 
But there you go. Brian Anderson is the new number one contender for the AEW World Championship. Next up, we had the Super Click, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, and Adam Cole taking on Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express Jungle Boy Luchasaurus. This was a uh, false count anywhere match. Uh, this match also went 20 plus minutes. So this is the fourth match on the card. A fourth match on the card. The first four matches went an hour and almost 30 minutes. And you know AEW likes to run long shows for their pay-per-views. I don't even know what to say about this match. It was all over the place. It was crazy. The the craziest thing. <laughs> The craziest thing that happened was Adam Cole. No, the first crazy thing was we got the the Young Bucks love thumbtacks, so we had the thumbtacks being broken out. They were put into Jungle Boy's mouth, and he was kicked in the face. Then they battled their way outside of the ring to the stage. Adam Cole brings out a sack, and in the sack are knee pads with thumbtacks on them. You heard that. Knee pads with thumbtacks on them. And they hit a triple BTE trigger, I believe, on Luchasaurus. Now, that should have been the end of the match. But I believe Jungle Boy had made the save and he had just got murdered right before that. <laughs> so. Like these dudes did so many crazy spots, it's very, very hard to go through all of it. But um, Jungle Boy won the match with a concerto to Matt Jackson, and he covered him for the one, two, three. This was a wild, wild, wild joint. Whew, wild. Um, Christian Cage and Jurassic Express will win the match. Next up, we had a another tag match as it was Andrade and Malachi Black taking on Pac and Cody Rhodes in the pre-show I picked um, Andrade and Malachi and I think they could take a loss I especially don't, don't think Andrade could, could have taken a loss but here we are um, this was an okay match it was a solid affair everybody here is actually uh, very good I, this was kind of a, an, another cool down um, match and Pac won with the Black Arrow pinning uh, Andrade so their feud isn't over they're probably going to get the rubber match going and Malachi and Cody aren't finished um, of course there were some wild moves because you got Pac in this match you know the man that gravity forgot and you got Andrade, you got Malachi Black, who Malachi was kind of invisible during this match, if I if I do say so myself. But um, it was still a very good match. Pac and Cody Rhodes win. And we're on to the next match, the Women's World Championship. Dr. Bitch Baker DMD taking on Ty Conte. And you guys know how I feel about this. Um, you know how I feel about Britt Baker. I think she is slightly overrated, and anyone that's feuding with her is made to look stupid. Case in point, why was Ty Conti not out? I'm sorry, why was Anna J not out here with Ty Conti? Why? Britt Baker's matches are slow, plotting. She's can only she her, all all of her best matches are usually with um, women who are, are clearly better than her. And Ty's bet. This is Ty's second uh, opportunity at the women's championship. Her best match, her bet, her better match was the first time she fought the title, fought for the title against Sheeta. We know Sheeta. Um, Britt won. You know Ty never ever ever had a chance. Um, Britt won with a roll up. Ty never had a chance, as we know we're we're just waiting for the inevitable Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa match. Um, I will tell you this: the, the WWE failed to utilize Ty, just like how they failed to utilize Deanna Peraza. Um, Britt's a good heel champion. I will give her credit for that. Um, it was an okay match. This match went 15 minutes, so right now this was the shortest match on the card. 
Um, but the shorter match was the next match. That would be Eddie Kingston versus CM Punk. And I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't want Punk to win this match. But the 11 minutes that it did worked. Um, <laughs> the matches opened up with Eddie just hitting. The match didn't even start. Eddie hit Punk with the CM with the uh, spinning back elbow. And Punk was out. He was dead. And so before the match even started, Punk was already down on the ground. Um, this was not a technical masterpiece as Punk got busted open when his head was rammed into the ring post. But um, Punk did win with the GTS. Eddie had hit a GTS of his own. But I really, really wanted Eddie Kingston to win this match. The fans wanted Eddie Kingston to win, win this match. Eddie has lost his three one-on-one -on -one matches at Big Rivers. He lost to Moxley for the title. He lost to Miro for the TNT Championship. And now he lost to CM Punk. So, I don't. I, I see what the story they're, they're trying to tell with Eddie. But he's got to win a big one at some point. This match did deliver. Um... It didn't need to go any longer than it did. It, it was almost perfect. Punk didn't really control this match. Eddie beat the shit out of Punk. Um, but yeah. Punk did offer his hand to Eddie. And Eddie just left. This was good. This was good. Uh, next up we had. The uh, street fight. With the men of the year, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, teaming with American top team, Dan Lambert, Jr. Dos Santos, and Andre Arlovsky taking on the inner circle. Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz. Now, this is a little bit weird because the match had tags in it. In a street fight. Which was a little weird. Um, But, uh, Jr. Dos Santos and... And Andre Arlovsky did look good in this match as they're they're the real rookies here. Um, Dan Lambert was just kind of there for the comedy, getting the cheap shots when he could. And why was it called a Minneapolis street fight? It is because all the weapons were things invented in New York uh, in, in Minneapolis: the bun cake pan, the toaster, the hockey stick, so on and so forth. Um, I don't think there was any real blood, but this, this, this was fun. Um, could you consider it a cool dub match? I, th I think so. And I think that was the point of having maybe the tags here. Uh, but it did ultimately break down. Eddie won with a frog splash. Another tribute to Eddie Guerrero. And um, this one, 20 minutes. This didn't need to go 20 minutes. They should have just started this match out as go 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 um it's been a fine feud uh up until this point and it's over so we we will see what's next i hope they can finally do something with um scorpio sky and ethan page because these guys are too good to be wasted we had a brief intermission tony shivani introduced AEW's next signing and uh, that would be the one and only Jay Lethal. So, Shivani's just spending money. Not Shivani, I'm sorry. Tony Khan is just spending money at this point. Uh, you know, Ring of Honor is no more at the moment. They had to release their entire roster. But Jay Lethal is here. I, I kind of wish Jay Lethal would have gone back to Impact. So, what's going to happen with KO and Keith Lee and Mia Yim and Taya Valkyrie? Where are those guys going to go? AEW's roster is already just a little bit bloated. So we'll see what they do with Jay Lethal. Right now, he's going to be taking on Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship this coming Wednesday. But Jay Lethal at the moment is all elite. And now we get to our main events Kenny Omega, Hangman Page, AEW World Championship. And, um,. We knew where this was going. We knew where this was headed. Listen. We spent two years building up to this. Building up to uh, 
Hangman Page becoming the new world champion, and he became the new world champion. This was all about telling a story. Uh, Don Callis did try to get involved in the match, but it didn't work. Omega hit everything, and at one point, <laughs> at one point, Hangman Page hit a one wing angel. Of course, Omega kicked out. So, this was less. This was let's just pull out all the triggers. The young bucks came out there, but they didn't get involved, and that was the story that it's just Hangman's time. Hangman was sent to one side of the ring. He had a buck. Um, Matt Jackson was standing there, and. No, 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 no. Nick was standing there and he had a chance to do something and he didn't. So Hangman hit a hit a buckshot lariat, went to the other side of the ring and Matt's there looking at him. And Matt gives him the a nod like, yeah. And then Hangman hits another buckshot lariat. One, two, three, we have a new world champion. And then the he celebrates in the Dark Order, emerge from the stage, cheering him on, and Hangman invites him to the ring. And that's also a great thing. But it also points out Anna J was out there with the Dark Order to help celebrate, but she was not out there with Ty Conti. You see what I mean when I say they make fuck Brit. Sorry, whatever. But this was this is what we've been leading up to two years, building two years of Hangman Page. We finally becoming champion finally being confident in himself and be able to take on all challengers and now um we have it we have our new champion so let me give you my star not my star ratings my regular ratings for the matches the buy-in pre-in uh buy-in show sheeta and rosa versus nyla and um, Jamie Hayter, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. I'm going to give MJ versus Darby Allen an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give the Lucha Brothers versus uh, Phoenix, Lucha Brothers versus FTR. I'm going to give that a 6.5 out of 10. Maybe a 7. Uh, uh, Mira versus Brian Danielson, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. The Super Click versus uh, Christian Cage and the General Express. I'm also going to give that a 7 out of 10. Andrade, versus Andrade and Malachi Black versus Pac and Cody. I'm going to give that a 6 out of 10. Britt Baker versus Ty Conti. I'm going to give that a 6 out of 10. Eddie versus Punk. I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. Men of the Year and American Top Team versus the Circle. I'm going to give that a 6 out of 10. And our main event, I'm going to give that an 8.5 out of 10. Overall, I'm going to give Full Gear a 6.5 out of 10. It was a good show, not a great show, and it felt overtly long. You, you like, We know it's going to be long, but when it feels long, that's the real issue that we have here. So, um, wasn't a bad show by any means. It just, it just felt long and... The West, the one thing I will give WWE credit for is the three hours are perfect. AEW needs to learn that not every match needs to go 20 minutes. Not every match needs to go 20 minutes. But uh, that's our show. That is what just happened. Come on and join me uh, this Saturday for episode 46 of the High Risk Wrestling Podcast, where we take a look at survivor series yeah so uh that's our show i'm jeremy pierce check me out on twitter at the 215 instagram charismatic underscore creations 52 youtube and tumblr charismatic creations uh yeah so um i'll see you this saturday peace